You know, tomatoes are the crop of the season. They're the crop of the year. They're the crop that everyone loves to grow no matter what. And I'm growing some juicy, squishy, delicious, delectable boys here. So we have some hacks for you in today's video. Nine tomato hacks that actually work, plus a bonus one at the end. So cultivate that like button for the juiciest toms on earth. And let's get into the video. Let's get a hack on the plate for you guys. Don't fertilize your tomatoes in a very specific way. I don't mean don't fertilize at all, but I mean be very strategic about how you fertilize these bad boys. These tomatoes want to put out a lot of leaves, especially early in their life. Why? The leaves are the basically the engines for the plant. They're going to help produce these juicy tomatoes right here. And that's what you want them to do. But if you keep too much nitrogen in your fertilizer too long into the plant's life, especially when you start to see flowers and fruit develop, it's really not what the plant needs at that point in time. You want to switch over to a more phosphorus and potassium heavy fertilizer. I've got one that we love here. It's called Tomato Tone from Espoma Organic. It's a 346, so NPK. Obviously that three is the lowest there. It's not super high in nitrogen. Now you can have somewhat high nitrogen early on, but if you over fert with nitrogen early, what you're gonna do is produce a ton of leaves and not a ton of tomatoes. When it comes to saving tomato seeds, this hack will actually ensure that your tomato seeds last for a long time and have less disease. So what are we doing here? We are fermenting tomato seeds. The reason why we're doing this, instead of the classic paper towel method, which works totally fine. If you're growing a tomato and you just wanna save a couple seeds to immediately plant next year, you're more than welcome to just throw them on a little sheet of paper, let them dry that way, totally fine. But if you wanna save your tomato seeds for a long time, like even up to 10 years, you're going to wanna ferment your seeds. The way you do that is that you're actually going to be pushing all of the juice and seed pulp into a jar. Now you need some of the tomato kind of juice and flesh to aid in the fermentation process. That's why I'm just going and squeezing this whole tomato in. And I am getting as many seeds as I can. If you want, you could just carefully remove the seeds and not eat the tomato. But this is a overripe tomato, which is actually more ideal for this process. Now the advantage to having a fermented seed is that it fully breaks down the outer little gel coating on a tomato seed, which means that it'll be easier to plant next year. It'll store longer because it'll be able to dry more properly. But the other nice thing about fermenting your tomato seeds is that it actually can have an effect to remove some bacterial and fungal diseases that might otherwise transfer onto your seed for next year. So what is the hack here? The hack is fermenting your seeds. They last a lot longer and they will be more disease free. For gardeners who, like me, need to harvest unripe, rock-hard green tomatoes at the end of the season, whether it's due to early frost, pests, or late blight, you can still ripen or soften and get color on these tomatoes by using a piece of fruit like an apple or banana. And this is how the hack works. These fruit are a great source of the plant hormone ethylene and in its gas form, it diffuses out of the plant cells of this ripe fruit into neighboring plant tissue. So if you put them side by side, this is going to trigger ripening in these tomatoes. And here are two more tips to do this right. When you go to lay your fruit in a single layer in your cardboard box, you wanna make sure that the blossom side is facing up because that side ripens first. If you place that at the bottom, it's going to get mushy fast. And another reason why you have to pay attention to how fast it ripens is because once the ethylene triggers this ripening in all of the fruit in the box, it's a one way, no return. Everything's gonna ripen really quickly. So keep an eye on it every day to make sure you don't get overly ripe fruit in there. Next hack for you is to chill out on your tomato planting. Just chill a little bit because what happens when you plant all these tomatoes at the same time with roughly the same maturity date? You get way too many tomatoes at once and actually what is a beautiful bounty and a delicious treat in the garden becomes your nightmare as the tomatoes rot and get all weird and messed up and you start being sad because you don't know what to do with all of them. You don't want that. So two different ways to approach this. Number one is my personal favorite way. It's sort of a little clever twist. Get tomatoes with different days to maturity. So for example, I have sun gold cherries. Cherries, smaller tomato, gr grows faster, right? 57 days to maturity on this one. Next up, I've got hybrid beefsteak, pink alicious, 70 days to maturity. I just bought myself two more weeks for these ones to get mature, right? Cherries coming first, two weeks later, I got these pink alicious guys. Next up, Tasmanian chocolate, 
This guy, I believe 85 days to maturity. That's another two weeks and that's 85 days plus. So that's one way to do it. You could plant all those at the exact same time and they would still ripen successively. The other way to do it, let's say you just love pinkalicious for some reason, that's the only thing you wanna grow. Well then stagger your plantings. So go two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, or maybe a month, something like that. And then you'll actually stagger out the ripening of a plant that has the same days to maturity. So a couple different ways to make sure you don't get sick of these juicy tomatoes. At the start of the season, and especially if your seedlings have gotten a bit tall and leggy, you may have come across that hack that if you bury the plant deep, it's going to be healthy and robust. How does this work? Well, it's because the plant stem has all of these adventitious roots ready to turn into roots. So I'm not talking about those fine hairs, which are trichomes, but those bumps actually turn into roots. And when you bury it deep, so let's say about a third to two thirds deep, so for this thing, maybe around here, you are going to have roots that spread and allow the plant to anchor itself into the soil. Not only that, it's going to send out more roots to seek out more nutrients and water. And that's how you get a healthier plant. And a quick note for the cold climate growers who want to try this technique. If you are digging a hole deeper, that means you're accessing colder soil, which is not ideal for these heat loving plants. So you want to grab yourself a soil thermometer and test it at the bottom of the hole and make sure that it's at least consistently 55, ideally 60 Fahrenheit before you plant your plants deep. Another option, if you can't go too deep because it's too cold, you can try planting it horizontally, which will give you very similar results. Our next hack is actually hacking off the top of your tomato plant. So it's called topping or top pruning, whatever you want to call it. Sounds like sacrilege, sounds like something you would never do to a tomato, but there's a couple compelling reasons to do it. Number one, if you are in a climate where it's about four weeks until you get a frost, but your tomatoes are still growing up and you have a lot of unripe tomatoes hanging on the vine. So let's just pretend that's my situation here. Well, why do I care about it growing more vertically? I really don't care. It has enough leaves on the plant that I can come through and snip off all the growing tips, force it to stop growing vertically and vegetatively, and really force it to think that the season's coming to a close sooner than it actually is. And it's gonna start ripening those fruit up a little bit faster. So that would be one reason. The other reason you might wanna to top off is Let's say I didn't have much more to support my tomatoes with. So they're at this point here, they're on this Florida weave style trellis with these T-posts and I don't have anything else. Well, I might as well prune off the top instead of letting it flip over. So that's another reason to do it. And then the third reason to top off is just because if you feel like you have enough tomatoes and you just wanna manicure and control the space, what'll happen if you top off and it's still early in the season is you'll have another sucker that's growing from down below that's gonna grow up and sort of replace your main leader. So a couple different reasons to snip off the tip of your tomatoes. If you have limited access to full sun or if you have a shorter growing season, then this tip is for you. So with the larger fruiting varieties, so let's picture beef steak where they're really, really big and they can get over a pound in size. They require more sunlight in a day to produce fruit when compared to their smaller fruiting counterparts like the cherry varieties and also the current size tomatoes. For those large fruiting ones, you want to give them at least 10 to 12 hours of sunlight per day in order order to allow them to produce the fruit that you want. Now, I don't personally grow those large ones. For my medium sized ones, I still give them the sunniest spot that I have. And then for the smaller ones, I have them on the other side of the bed where they still get lots of sun, but maybe a couple hours less per day and they do just fine and they still produce a lot of fruit. I've got a dirty little hack for you. If you love a particular tomato, but you don't have enough time to start another seed of it and you still want more of it. So let's take a look at this guy right here. I have to say, beautiful looking tomatoes. These are dwarf indeterminate tomatoes. We'll probably do a video on that particular category. It's a fascinating category. However, let's say it's August right now. It actually is August and I want more of these and I still have some time, but if I started from seed, I, I would not have the time at all. But what you can do is just clone off of this plant, clone a sucker off. So take a really healthy growing tip. Let's just say maybe this guy right here, it's much like pruning a tomato sucker like I've showed you in multiple videos. So here's what you can do with this. You can water root this by putting it in a little vase or a little jar, transplanting that into the garden. You can put it into a fine mix of soil, much like a seed starting mix. Just make sure it's nice and moist. Don't even have to dip it in rooting hormone. Or if you really just wanna get going with it, 
you can just dig out a little area of your garden and plant it directly in, firm that soil up. And what you're basically doing here is you're starting a clone of this plant. It's already at this phase instead of starting it from seed. So this probably saves you about two to four weeks of growth. If you have enough time to get another ripening fruit out of this plant and you can multiply your harvest, well, it's a great little hack for you. If you are a space limited gardener and you wanna grow as many tomato varieties as you can, this hack is for you. And that is pruning your tomatoes to a single or double liter. Now there are a lot of advantages to this. As you could see, this plant started off as one and split into two main liters, whereas this plant started as one and then all the way at the top split into multiple other liters. The advantage of this is that you could cram way more tomatoes into the same bed. In this case, you could get away with like 16, 18 inch spacing rather than 24 to 36 if you were to grow an indeterminate tomato in say like a Florida weave. So what that means is that for the same bed, I could fit four tomatoes in this row instead of just three. It also means that I will get a lot more tomatoes earlier. The cool thing about this is that since you could also fit more tomatoes into your same space, you could grow more varieties, experience more flavors, and actually find your favorite tomato. So if you are limited on space, really consider leading your tomatoes down to one to two liters. What if I told you that there was a way to grow tomatoes without any water at all? If you're familiar with viticulture or growing grapes, dry farmed vineyards are kind of a thing now. They're kind of popular, kind of pop in, you see them on social media. Well, you can actually dry farm tomatoes as well. There's a very specific use case that you can do this in. It's basically just don't water it at all, but how do you actually get away with that without killing off the plant? Well, you're gonna to need to be in a climate that has relatively heavy clay soil or somewhat clay soil, and it's a climate that's somewhat temperate and a climate that gives a decent amount of late winter rain to hydrate that clay soil. You wanna get a early producing tomato in the ground right when you can. So early in the spring and then hill it up over time with more of that clay. And the whole point of this is like, why would you do this, right? Why would I not water it when I can just water it and solve the problem? Well, in viticulture, the whole idea there is that you're forcing those grape roots to get down in the soil search for nutrients, hunt for them. The flavor is supposed to be intensified as the plant has struggled more. Think about it, if you're just sitting in a little chair and everyone brings you pizza to your face, you're the guy from Wally. -E. Now it's kind of the same with plants. If you give them everything they need 24 seven, yeah, they're gonna grow well and they're gonna look good and that's totally fine. There's a totally different philosophy to growing things where you purposefully stress them out to produce certain flavonoids and certain flavors and textures that might be really advantageous. So. Something to think about, dry farming. Not sure I'm gonna try it out until next season, but hopefully you got some hacks that actually work in this video. And until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.